In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of new life, have mercy on us. We confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign of, from your paths. We are prepared for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another in your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcoming your coming among us. Amen. In the name of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, nurture our growth as people of repentance and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 11. A, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord, he shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son.
second reading is from the book of Romans, the 15th chapter. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God, in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles, and sing praises to your name. And again he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples praise him. And again Isaiah says, the root of Jesse shall come, the one who rises to rule the Gentiles. In him the Gentiles shall hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locust and wild honey. Then the people of Jerusalem and all Judea were going out to him and all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees, and every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown, thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with fire, and his winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, and will gather his wheat into the granary, 
but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the disadvantages of being vertically challenged is that sometimes at a concert or a movie theater, someone taller than, than I normally sits in front of me. And it takes, and so I can't really see, and it takes a lot of effort for me to position myself in some way so that what I want to see isn't totally obstructed. Well, today, as John the Baptist calls us to prepare the way for Jesus coming, he calls us away from whatever is obstructing our view of Christ as we prepare for his arrival. Nothing is more important for John and nor for us than Jesus coming. Being the one to prepare the way for God's anointed was John's purpose in life. He was born to be the last of God's prophets. He is focused on preparing God's people for God's Messiah and Savior. John always points to Jesus and the power of new life and God's presence that he alone brings. John's own appearance is sudden and unexpected. He bursts on the scene, living in a cave in the wilderness, and he begins proclaiming God's kingdom and the need for people to repent. John calls people to turn again to God, to humble themselves, and to submit to a washing of their sins, a baptism of sorts, if you will, but not the baptism that you and I experienced. It was a washing to prepare for the one who was coming. And John's preaching caused quite a ruckus and brought out large crowds from Jerusalem and the surrounding area into the wilderness. People wanted to be baptized as a sign they were ready for the new thing that God was doing. The people were hoping and wondering if this one John was proclaiming really was the Messiah who was coming to save them. And while John's focus at that moment was on the people of Israel, where God's action would begin. The second reading from Romans has Paul declare that while Christ was the servant of the circumcised to confirm the promises God made to the patriarchs, that would be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Gentiles also would glorify God for his mercy, for including them in Jesus' mission of the reconciliation with God and new life. This was to be for all people, both Jews and Gentiles. Therefore, God in Christ invites and seeks all people to belong to him. All of us who belong to God through our, our baptism into Jesus' death and resurrection are called to welcome all and give grace to all who come to us according to the welcome and grace that we have received from Christ. And so as we live as part of the body of Christ, you and I are like John the Baptist, so that nothing we do or say will obstruct others of the view of our Lord Jesus. 
We are blessed because he is with us and among us. He is the head of his body. And it is by Jesus' direction that we proclaim the good news of new life and the saving, life-giving love Christ offers to all by his own death and resurrection. You and I cannot allow public pressure from the surrounding culture to ever deny or contradict Jesus' own words of love and mercy, grace and welcome to everyone. Hate and prejudice of any kind have no place in God's plan to reconcile all people and all creation to himself and for us to be reconciled to one another and the rest of creation. Jesus' word is the life-giving gospel of hope, joy, and peace that is for all without exception. And it is indeed the word that the world needs now as it always has needed and will continue to need until God's kingdom permanently comes. But now we prepare for Jesus' coming. Our hearts and our minds turn to God again as we pray more regularly and read more of the scriptures. And you know, that's why the devotional booklets are out on the tables and the shelves for you to pick up and take along and add some reflection of, on scripture and prayers that you might not normally have. When we turn to God, we are also turned away from ourselves from our wills and desires, from our agendas, we turn to God and to one another and our neighbor so that we, like John the Baptist, continue to point to Christ, making him known, making him visible by our words and our actions, laser-focused like John on Christ. And while we already know that Jesus has appeared once and he, the kingdom broke into the world right at that moment, but we are also very much aware that it is not yet fulfilled. And so while we wait, we, we are seeking to live faithfully as Christ's body and focusing and putting our focus on others helping them to know who Christ is as we all wait. And you know, one of the most significant ways we point to him is as, as we gather at this table where we see and receive the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ. Here, Jesus is our host and he is our meal coming to make us strong in faith, giving us a foretaste of the kingdom that is coming. This meal is proof that death has been swallowed up by Christ and reveals his glory and his victory by his resurrection. In this meal, we see a quick glance of God's kingdom that will fully come in God's time. But now we pray that it will come also for us. This is our hope and our joy in Christ. And so let us say with the whole church this Advent, come Lord Jesus, come. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen.
Let us confess the words, uh, the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns with new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for the hymn writers and theologians, especially John of Damascus, whom we commemorate today. Inspire teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. God, in your mercy. You give us a vision of creation in harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy, you defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy, you urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for the homebound, those separated from loved ones and those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Haley Cook, Bonnie, Pat Crawford, Greg Lesher, Phil Hartenstein, Samantha Neese, Pat and John Shribus, Barbara Steffi, Eleanor Sayers, Derek, and Jared Atkins, Shirley Groff, Harlan and Harlan Redkay. God, in your mercy. Gracious God, in this season of Advent, we prepare the, for the coming of Jesus. Bring to us all who seek you and your mercy. Inspire us to be like John the Baptist, who constantly pointed to Jesus, your son, the one who brings your love, forgiveness, new life, and peace to all. May his presence be among us so that all who seek him may believe that he is our Savior and Lord. 
God, in your mercy, you embrace all who have died, trusting in your promises, especially Bob Brenneman, Jerry Atkins, and J.D. Myers. Comfort their families, and we give you thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always.
offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal. Through Jesus Christ, our pathway and our peace. Amen. Amen. to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your Son, Jesus, came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine that we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, the banquet is now ready.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ, as we await for the day when your promises will be fulfilled. <coughs> Sustain us and strengthen us by the holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.